claim. Shut up! You in spring, I'm in the winter. Shut up! You don't have no coat on because it's not cold on your side of the world. But over here, we're in the season of weeping. And they wept a long time. And they wept a long time. And I had to come back and preach this part of it to let you know that there is a time after you have suffered a while and cried a while and been empty a while and been plagued a while and been lonely a while and been frustrated a while and been without a while and had to be denied a while. There is a place that comes along after you've been confused a while, after you've been in anguish a while, after you've been tormented a while. There is a win, win, win. There is a time, my brothers and sisters, that God just says enough. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but the Holy Ghost said enough. I don't know who this message is for, but God said enough. You've been in a season of hell and high water, but the Spirit just said enough is enough. You're coming into a win, and you're coming into a release, and you're coming into a breakthrough. If you think that I might be preaching to you, give him a crazy praise right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Type it. That's for me. That's for me. That's for me. I claim it for mine. I reach up and grab it. God just said enough. When God said enough, I checked it on my watch. And I saw that God had a time to bring me out of my weeping. God has a time already set aside. Didn't you hear the bell ring? Did you, did you not hear that alarm go off? Did you not hear that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes bing in the morning? Do you not know? That God has a win. God had a point in their suffering in Babylonian captivity that God said, that's enough. I let you be drug out of your own land. I let you be drugged down and shackled like animals. I let your men be castrated and your men be raped and your women be raped. And I let you weep by the willow trees. And I did nothing to stop it. But I did keep my eye on the watch. And when the Lord turned to can our captivity, the, the writer here, when he writes about the Lord turning our captivity, he does not have access to all the things that God had to do to turn their captivity around. The fall of Babylon denotes the end of the Neo-Babylonian empire. After it, it was conquered, by Archimedean, by the Archimedean Empire. It was, it was conquered. Wait, wait, I want you to see this. The people who conquered Jerusalem got conquered. See, the, the, the Archimedeans were Persians. They were nomadic Persians that after 70 years of Babylonian captivity, they came in and conquered the conquerors. <laughs> See, sometimes God's got you on hold because he's getting another group ready to come in and deal with your enemies. God has a way of getting justice out of the chaos in your life. And the Babylonians were sitting around bragging and poking fun and telling them to sing and dance for us. And while they were playing with them, God was raising up the Persians to overthrow the empire. In 539 B.C., God said, enough. And all of a sudden, everything began to change. And God used a young man who was the son of a princess to come in. The young man was Labashai Marbuk. 
and he comes in and God uses him to wreak havoc. And the Babylonians who thought they couldn't be brought down, got brought down. Listen, America. Be very careful. The Babylonian Empire came down. The Roman Empire came down. The Kushite Empire came down. Don't you get high-minded and think that we cannot come down. we got to be careful what we let go on and what we let happen in this country because it is possible. History teaches us that kingdoms fall. <laughs> Nations fall. Empires crush. The Babylonians thought they couldn't be taken. They thought they were bad. But the Persians came up and they brought the whole empire down. Babylon, not Babylon. Babylon's name goes back to the Tower of Babel. But God still brought them down. Not Babylon. Babylon comes out of the Old Testament. Mesopotamia, the new word we would have would be our right. Not them, but God brought them down. God can bring you down. He can shut it down. That's why you got to live with a certain amount of humility. I don't care how many skyscrapers you build, how many jets you own, how strong your technology is. God don't care nothing about none of that. When God gets ready to shut you down, he shut down the whole world with a virus we can't even see. And not one atomic bomb did anybody any good. Not one supersonic jet did anybody any good. Not IBM, not Xerox, not Google, not nobody could do anything think about it. God used something we never even thought of. A bug from a bird shut down the planet. You don't know what God's going to fight with, but I declare God's going to get you out of this. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I feel like dancing right where I stand. You don't know who God's going to use, but God's going to get you out of this. He doesn't have to use the deacons and the church mothers and the intercessors and the deep and the bishops and the prayer warrior. When God gets ready to use you, he can bring an idolatrous. He can bring a whoremonger. God has a way of using stuff that you never even thought about. He'll use a jawbone of an ass. He'll lose two fish and five loaves. When God says enough, He'll use whatever he wants to use. He'll use anybody he wants to use. He'll touch anybody he wants to touch. He'll use a harlot like Rahab. When God says enough, he'll let a nation that you should be able to beat, beat you. He'll let AI conquer you even after you conquer Canaan. Canaan, when God gets ready to bring you out, He'll use anything. And all of a sudden, he began to turn everything around. Babylon was some place that they thought would never be destroyed. Babylon was strong and fierce. Babylon was posted by the rivers of the Euphrates. It started out as a small port. It grew into a great empire. They were ruling and conquering and taking over. But they messed around and they took God's children down into bondage. And when God got sick of it, he brought it to an end and he stopped it. And Babylon is reaping what they sowed. Fret not thyself over evildoers and how they prosper in their own way. Sooner or later, God will cause them to reap what they sowed. You might be outnumbered, they may have more money, they may have more contacts, but when God gets ready to bring you out, he will bring you out. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I feel like I'm talking to somebody. If I'm talking to you, just type win, 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 win. When the Lord turned again, our captivity. <laughs> We were like them that dream. In one moment, the weeping turned to laughter. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. The very people who were hanging, hanging their harps by the willow trees and weeping when they remembered Zion are now giggling and laughing.
because God has a win. I am telling all of you that are suffering and all of you that are in agony and all of you that are secretly suicidal and all of you that are depressed, don't get too used to being depressed. Don't get too used to being down because God owns a win. And when God says win, he will bring it to an end and the same lips that quivered with tears and the same face that cried itself to sleep and the same person who rolled over and over in agony and couldn't rest at night, God will make you burst out and start laughing. When the Lord turned again our captivity, it was like a dream. These people hadn't been free in so long that free didn't seem normal. Have you ever been denied something so long that you got used to not having it? Have you ever been alone so long that you stopped being lonely? Have you ever been in a crisis so long that it became your norm? When the Lord turned again, our captivity, it was like a dream. And the Holy Spirit told me to tell you, you're going to dream again. When I get through bringing you out, you're going to be scared to believe it. It's going to seem like it's somebody else. When I open up a door for you, it's going to blow your mind. When I set you free, you're going to say, is that me? I don't know what to think about it. Is this my house? Could this be my job? Could this be my husband? Is that my wife? You mean you would do that for me? God said, I'm going to bless you till you're going to have to pinch yourself. Oh, get ready to pinch yourself. God said, I'll blow your mind. I'll cause you to prosper. The contract will close, the property will sell, the door will open, the mountain will move, the yoke will be broken, the enemy defeated. When the Lord turned again, <laughs> when he turned, when he turned, God got to turn it. He did something in heaven and it hit the earth realm. He did something in heaven and God raised up somebody who didn't even know me to deliver me. When the Lord turned again, our captivity we were like them that dream. It was hard to believe. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. I want somebody to just start laughing right now. I want you to practice your laugh. I want you to practice your laugh. I want you to practice your laugh. It's not going to seem like a laugh right now, but I want you to start practicing your laugh because God said, I'm going to make you laugh again. You're going to get right up in the devil's face and laugh. You're going to get right up in the face of the Babylonians and go to laughing. You thought I'd never laugh again? Check this out. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> Check this out. Cancer? <laughs> Leukemia? <laughs> COVID, <laughs> you thought you had me. I like to die, but <laughs> God said, I'm going to fill your mouth with laughter. And your tongue was singing. And all of a sudden, I am going to bless you so good that even the unbelievers are going to say the Lord have done great things for them. I'm going to bless you so good that you're not going to be able to hide it. I'm going to bless you so good that unbelievers are going to be standing there with their mouth hanging open in shock. The Bible said the heathens said the Lord have done great things for them. And they agreed with the heathens and said the Lord have done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. I pray a spirit of gladness. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray a spirit of gladness against every spirit of heaviness and every spirit of forlornment and every spirit of frustration and every spirit of defeatism and every spirit of agony and every spirit of witchcraft and every spirit of evil and every spirit of death and every spirit of mourning. I pray a spirit of gladness would break out right now. Somebody's going to start laughing in the Holy Ghost. You started out crying, but you're going to end up laughing. God's going to give you a belly laughter, a laugh down in your spirit and down in your soul. Open your mouth and make a joy for the Lord. Open your mouth and make a joy for the Lord. Open your mouth and make a joy for the Lord. 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 Make a joy for joy for joy for joy for joy 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 Do not joy is how we draw waters from the wells of salvation. Why did you let the devil have your joy? 
It's time to reach in there and get your joy back. Reach in there and get your smile back. Reach.